Arrays. I love arrays. Yes, some people think that's sarcasm. No, I really, truly love arrays. Um, let's talk about a relatively simple program. Let's talk about Hangman. I know it's a game, it's not a program. But one of the programs that I like to have people do is Hangman, and I'll do a demo of that. And typically what you'll do is you will store a bunch, a bunch of possible answers, you'll use a random number to guess, the, to choose them, and then you'll guess. And this is all complicated array stuff. So let's, let's just start with the concept of we want to play Hangman, or we want to program Hangman. And step one, store values to be guessed. Well, if it's going to be a good game, you should have at least 10 to 15 possible words that could come up to be guessed. It should be more than that, actually. And how would you do that? Well, an array is a very special type of variable. And it really is one of my favorite things in programming because I've used it so many times in so many different ways. If we were doing this for Hangman, we would have a variable, which we would call answers. And what makes an array different from a regular variable is that you declare a size on it, and now you'll have 10 different variables all named answer. And when you access them, you'll access them by 0 through 9. What happens when you store this Let's look at what this would look like in memory. So we declare variable answers within brackets is 10. And that tells us that we're declaring 10 spots for that variable. And so logically in memory, we get basically 10 blocks strung out next to each other. I'm not going to draw all 10, I'm just going to do three. And we can store things in them, but they each have a name. This is answer zero, and that's a subscript. This would be answer one, and this would be answer Two, and it would go all the way through nine. With arrays, you always start counting at zero. So you have 10 memory spots numbered. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so we could put a different answer in each one. Let's say we were doing Hangman and the theme was colors. We could have green, yellow, chartreuse, I don't even know what color that is, but I believe it is a color. So you can store them, and then we can use them in lots of different ways. So this would go on to answer, and they should all have the little brackets around them, answer nine. Now we, in our last chapter, we learned about looping. And if we were going to go through and use, do something to everything in an array, you'd use a loop, and we'll talk about that in a minute. The first step of Hangman, would be to generate a random number between 0 and 9 and to pick one of these options. So let's say we generate a random number and we get 1. That would be the variable. Now, we don't always have to give it a static number. Let's talk about the next step of our hangman logic. I love arrays. You can do so many things with them. So we have picked and answer equals yellow. And that's actually answer one equals yellow. So what would be the next step? We have to make it so that somebody can guess those letters. So what we would do is we would take an array of letters. So we declare a variable letters. And we would actually make my answer equal to whatever stored in answer one, which would be our, our random reply. So it would be equal yellow. And we can have that equal my um, letters, brackets, and it would be in the brackets 
my answer dot length because every array is fi fi finite which means it has a definite starting and stopping point it can be 10,000 spots long it can be three spots long but it doesn't grow or sh shrink in most programming languages if, an, if it's an array so what you can do is you can use something to calculate it in this case we're getting the length of the string yellow and that's setting the size of our array it doesn't have to be predetermined you can get it on the fly and then we would have this would be equal to an array of letters called yellow and we could then use a for loop get a guess so typical typical person on Wheel of Fortune if they're asked to guess letters would guess vow vowels A E I O U so we'll say that the guess is A and we would do a for loop to go through and check is A equal to Y is A equal to E? Is A equal to L? Is A equal to L? So you can use your for loop to step through an array. I absolutely love arrays. They are a way to store a lot of things of the same type that then you can use loops to go through and do the same thing to each one. Let's talk about a concept called parallel arrays. Now we won't get to program them in this class, but they're a neat concept. When I teach JavaScript, parallel arrays are one of the most powerful things that I can teach. When I'm using JavaScript, we do something, um, it's basically a slideshow. And at the top of the slideshow, we have a title. Then we have a picture. That's a picture. And then we have a caption. And all of these things are related to each other. And if you want to have ten of them, you would use parallel arrays. And you would use an array of titles, zero through ten. You'd use an array of pictures, zero through ten. You'd use an array of captions, zero through ten. And so when you were changing them, you could change them all on one variable. If you were using like a counter and a for loop, they could all change on i. So if we all start at zero, title zero, picture zero, captions there, they're all referring to the same thing. If we go to three, title three, image three, caption three, would all refer to the same thing. So the title would describe the image, the caption would describe the image, they'd all be about the same subject. So you can have a lot of different arrays that are referring to related items in the same spot. And I use this constantly because a lot of the programming that I do is web programming and doing portfolios and things like this is really common to have information that's related with related arrays. And so that would be where you would use your parallel arrays. Let's talk about how you would use an array with a for loop. Now, let's say that we have declared an array and we've initialized it at the same time. You'll notice that when I'm putting in numbers, they're not in quotes because numbers generally aren't. Strings are typically in double quotes and individual letters or characters are often in single quotes, depending on the programming language. So I've declared an array that is five items long. And remember, they would be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Those are our array items. Then I'm using a for loop. For, I'm declaring a variable named i. I'm initializing it to 0. And notice here, I don't have to put in a number. I can have it calculated. Student ID dot length, which is five. So this value is five. As long as variable i is less than five, i plus plus. So then we will step through our code. And we're going to do an if statement. If student ID i, whatever's at this spot, equals equals, equals equals is a comparison. A single equals is an assignment two equal signs compare. So if the student ID equals equals 42, display student space plus student ID I has all the answers. So let's walk through it as if we were running the program. First time we walk through, variable I is zero. Student ID length is five. We haven't gotten to I plus plus. Is zero less than five? Yes, it is. So we're going to compare student ID i, that's 15, to 42. Are they the same? No. Nothing happens, because this is an if statement. And we really should have brackets here, though. If it's just a single 
statement, it will run just one statement. It doesn't need to be in brackets. So we increment i. So variable i is now equal to 1. 1 is less than 5. So we'll do a comparison. Student ID i, 1, that's 72, is, le is not equal to 42. Nothing happens because it's an if statement. We increment i, and i becomes 2. 2 is less than 5. We check what's in here. 4 is not equal to 42. Nothing happens. We increment i. 3. We check if student ID at the spot i is 42 is equal to 42, we display on screen student 42 has all the answers. We finish that, we drop out, this becomes 4 if 30 is equal to 42, which it's not, so nothing happens. So all that happens is on the screen, we display student 42 has all the answers. And that's how you would use a for loop to step through an array, which is a very common programming technique.